Hey everybody, this is Pete Wenzel and today I'm going to show you how to colorize this sad looking gray landscape in Blender with just one material. How to get to the Briggy landscape will not be part of this video. So if you are interested in this topic, check out my linked video. We have to select the object, which is the source of all the particles, and go to Material. Let's add a new material and rename it Brick Landscape Source. To see everything, we are going to change view mode to Look Dev. Split your window and switch one to Shader Editor. First, I would like to introduce some slightly color variations, because some of the bricks would be older and other newer. As a result, some should be brighter and other darker. For this we need a color ramp, an object info, a RGB and a mix RGB node. I highly recommend to use the Shift A shortcut for adding nodes. Using the RGB node, we control the base color. Set this to gray. If you have a reference image, you can load it into the image editor and use the eyedropper to select the color. Connect the RGB to the base color of the principal BSDF shader. Uh, I don't like the ratio of the split screen. Let's change it from horizontal to vertical. Connect the random input of the object info to the color ramp. This will convert a random value of each object to a shade of gray. Hopefully we will get more than 50. Move the mix RGB node between the RGB and the shader. It should be automatic connected. Connect the output of the color ramp with the free input from the mix RGB node. Currently the blending is not what we want, because we want a defined base color slightly darken or brighten depending on the output of the color ramp. Set the blend mode to overlay. Zero means we only use our base color and no variation. And one means we change the base color 100% to the color ramp. I prefer values of 0 0.1 or even lower. Second, I would like to adjust the color of the bricks depending on their Z position. For this, we need a second color ramp, a mapping and a gradient texture node. Substitute the RGB node with the color ramp and connect the location output of the object info with the color ramp. You may delete the RGB node, because it was only used for the visualization of the first step. To rotate the direction of the color gradient, we use the mapping node. Change the mode to point and rotate it 90 degree around Y axis. The result should be different, but not great at all. The reason is that a vector has three dimensions and the color ramp can only handle one dimension as input. The job of the gradient node is to take the vector and convert it into a single number. Therefore, we move it right between the mapping and the color ramp. Ta-da! Now the height is color coded. If you do not see something like I do, you may adjust the set scaling. Now I am going to add new color stops. Set the color I would like to have and the position. The lowest bricks shall be green. The highest should be light bluish gray. 
Between them, I would like to add dark bluish gray. And brown. And tan as well. Beware to change the interpolation mode to constant, otherwise you will get calculated colors in between. If you are asking why I know all the colors, BAM! My second screen. For my avatar, shown in my end screen, I have created this texture file with lots of ready-to-use colors. So just using the Photoshop eyedrop. Then copy the hex value and paste it into Blender. If you like this video, share it with your friends, give me a thumb up and feel free to ask further questions in the comments below. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Currently all the colors are horizontal layered and this looks a little bit artificial. So the third I would like to adjust is feathering the color edges to give it a more organic look. We can achieve this with just adding one more mix RGB node and move it between the gradient texture and the color ramp. Use the random object input as second color and set the fact to zero. Using these settings, the new node will have exactly no impact to the result. But when increasing the factor, there will be more and more color randomization until we reach one, where the Z position has no impact on the resulting color and everything is messed up. In this case, some values between 0.2 and 0.3 looks best to me. After the randomization I would like to change the color stops of the color ramp again to get the result I am looking for. Now it is time to enjoy your work. We have a brick looking landscape with height based color variations. And that would be the end of this tutorial. In the next video I will show you how to set up some lights using an environment map to be able to see the different colors we've just created in Render View 2. Now you have reached the end of this video. But this doesn't mean you have to talk to real people. You may be interested in my new video over there. Or you could watch this recommended video. And as a last opportunity, there are many more videos for you at my channel.